Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In the previous video, we have seen the RAG pipeline, that is the Retrieval Augmented Generation Pipeline. In this particular video, we'll be focusing on one of the sections of that RAG pipeline, which is termed as chunking. We'll see what exactly is chunking. We'll have a look at the introduction to chunking in this particular video. Along with that, we'll also see why chunking is required. And with that, we'll also see the different types of chunking that we have. So let's have an overview of what exactly chunking is. So if you remember, we had seen this RAG pipeline. Now in this particular pipeline, we had seen we have a huge knowledge base. And from that knowledge base, whatever is the data, we process it into documents. So specifically, this chunking process is related to this particular section of processing, or I would say dividing the data into set of documents. So without any further delay, let's move on to the definition of chunking. So by the definition, chunking is the process of breaking down large documents into smaller, manageable pieces of chunks. As you know, we may have huge data. For every particular use case, we may have tons of data. We cannot directly feed that particular data into the RAG pipeline for retrieval purpose as well as for generation purpose. Even if we want to have a look at a particular thing from that huge amount of data, it's almost impossible for us to do that. So how can we expect it from machines? That is why to make their work easier, we use this chunking process. In this, what exactly we do? We break down the huge data that is actually present in the knowledge base in any particular format into smaller documents. And that smaller documents are nothing but the manageable pieces. And we call each smaller document that is created from this huge large documents is called as chunks. One single document is called as one chunk. So I hope the process of chunking is clear to you all. Now, this chunking process makes it efficient for retrieval as well as for generation purpose. And also note one thing that whatever will be retrieved as a result with the help of this chunking process will be relevant information only. There are very less chances that we'll get wrong results. And therefore, this chunking process is very much useful when we talk about vast amount of data in the RAC pipeline. So I hope you must have got an overview of what exactly chunking is. Now we'll see the visual representation of how chunking works. Now, let's say we have a larger document. A larger document can be entire knowledge base. It can contain all the information that is relevant for your RAC pipeline for any particular use case. Now, if we try to feed this entire large document into the RAC pipeline, it will be very difficult for retrieval because this entire large document will be embedded into a vector, a single vector. That single vector will always be retrieved whenever any query is fired by the user. Now, since this entire larger document is retrieved in the form of results from the vector database, this entire vector for this particular large document will be feeded in the large language model. Now, it will be very difficult for the large language model to pass through this entire larger document and find out the relevant results. So to make the work easier, what we'll do, we'll simply use the chunking process. We'll divide this entire document into small chunks. Now here, we can divide this larger document into n number of chunks. We can have chunk one, chunk two, chunk n. Now the number of chunks can be decided by looking at a particular use case data. Don't worry about all that. We'll see in the upcoming videos how we can perform optimal chunking, as well as we'll also see that which chunking method will be suitable for various scenarios. For now, just understand that this larger documents is divided into n number of chunks. Now, each and every chunk will be then sent to the embedding model for creating the vectors of these. A separate vector will be created for chunk one, separate vector will be created for chunk two, and so on. Instead of creating one single vector for the entire larger document. So I hope the visual representation of chunking is clear to you all. Now, we'll specifically look into why exactly we require chunking. Do you want to check out this attractive funny memes? Then what are you waiting for? These are just a glimpse of the memes that I've created on my Instagram page. You can find the link to my Instagram handle in the description box. Please visit the link and do watch all these interesting funny memes. These are not just memes. 
these memes and reels contains technical information here i try to relate memes with the technological concepts so please do appreciate that by watching all those and if you love it please hit the follow button so the very first point for which we require chunking is memory limitations yes larger documents can exceed memory capacity if we feed the entire larger document in the rack pipeline it will not be optimal at all because this larger document will require larger amount of memory for storage as well as for processing if we use the method of chunking it will break down the data into manageable sizes which then will be easily stored as well as will be easily processed so this memory limitation is one of the drawback because of which we require chunking next drawback because of which we require chunking is the processing efficiency smaller chunks are faster to process just imagine if you are given with entire big document and if i ask you to learn things from it will it be manageable for you no right if i give the same document in small pieces and if i make sure that every single piece is semantically complete then obviously it will be very much simpler for you to learn that particular amount of information yes the document remains the same but the way through which i am making you learn is different so smaller chunks are always faster to process it reduces the computational load the third drawback because of which chunking is required is improved retrieval accuracy if we use the process of chunking the retrieval will focus only on the relevant sections once the perfect match is found only that particular chunk will be retrieved as the final result and will be sent to the large language model for generation purpose it will enhance the context specific responses and therefore if a user ask a particular query the user will get context specific responses only there will be no rubbish as well as out of scope response will be given to the user that is why chunking makes it very much helpful the next drawback because of which chunking is required is that it simplifies the information management it is easier to navigate and search as i already said that retrieval becomes faster because of chunking Facil it facilitates the quick access to specific data and it becomes possible for us to focus on a particular specific area in detail the fifth drawback because of which chunking is required is scalability it allows handling of larger data sets so even if the data gets larger and larger in amount you don't have to worry about it because only the number of chunks will be increased you don't have to scale your processing unit it makes the system more robust and scalable so yes because of all these five points we can say that yes chunking is very much required and if we explore it practically you will understand why exactly it is very much helpful so i hope the benefits of chunking is clear to you all now we'll have a look at the different types of chunking that we have so generally we have five types of chunking the very first type of chunking is fixed size chunking in this we create chunks of fixed size next we have recursive chunking this is a very much interesting type of chunking in which we can create chunks with the help of separators and we can have many other things to explore in this the next type of chunking is document specific chunking in this we create the chunks from the document by considering the document's structure the next type of chunking is semantic chunking in this we create chunks by splitting a given text based on how similar the chunks are in meaning here we consider the meaning of the chunk also and that is why it is called as semantic chunking it is very much powerful have a look at it in the upcoming videos the next type of chunking is agentic chunking now this is a very interesting type of chunking in this we use a large language model to determine the chunk size as well as the content that is based on the context so all this powerful chunking strategies we are going to explore in the upcoming videos so stay tuned for that and now i hope that you must have got an idea about what exactly chunking is what are the different strategies that we can have in chunking how powerful it is for more such videos do like share and subscribe to my channel also hit the bell icon and don't forget to follow me on instagram please join me on telegram thanks for watching have a good day ahead